Well, here we are at day eight, and I'm happy to say we're finally getting ourselves into some, some better weather. The sun is shining, and we finally left that very, very intense storm system that we had in the Atlantic after leaving uh, the English Channel in Southampton. Uh, we experienced huge seas, hurricane force winds, uh, but fortunately that's all behind us. We made our turn to the south yesterday afternoon, and uh, early this morning around six o'clock we uh, came further over to starboard, and now we're on a southwesterly heading taking us uh, just north of the Azores. The ride on the ship is still uh, extremely smooth. All the work's uh, ongoing as, as planned and scheduled, the rehearsals, uh, all the contractors doing their, um, their, their final touches. So, uh, so we're still in uh, real good shape. But I have to say, uh, the ship has just continued to amaze us. Uh, the way that she took these, uh, these extremely, extremely heavy conditions uh, was just uh, nothing short of uh, very, very impressive. Uh, gives us a great sense of confidence in the, uh, in the ship that we have here with the Oasis of the Seas. The hull form of the ship uh, certainly contributed to that. Uh, the way that we were taking, uh, taking the waves, whether they were directly on the bow, off the bow, on the beam, on the quarter, was just uh, the best I've seen, quite frankly. Just before the Oasis was launched, uh, we actually took a trip into the dry dock and uh, looked more closely at the hull. One of the areas that has really gotten a lot of attention and focus is the hull of the ship itself. I'm standing here right now under the bulbous bow. This strange thing in front of the ship under the waterline actually results in about a 1% less resistance to the ship moving through the water because it generates a bow wave a little bit earlier than would have otherwise taken place if we didn't have the bulbous bow. Other things we've done, very small details, all the welding seams, and there's, there's kilometers of them, miles of them on the hull, have been ground flat. So really, the hull is as smooth, I guess I could say, as a baby's butt. And that has also contributed to the efficiencies of the hull. And then perhaps most importantly, with the advancement of computer processing, we've been able to use supercomputers to model the efficiencies of the hull in every way. So we're really looking at one of the most, if not the most efficient hull form in the world on any kind of a ship. It's truly remarkable. And combined with the efficiencies of the azipods on the stern with those pulling propellers, it just is a remarkably energy efficient ship, and we're really, really proud about that.